to love, right? False. Psychopaths actually have the incapability of love. They look at love as a form of disrespect and despise. They actually feed off of people who have and experience love. Um, so today, I want you to understand how to identify a psychopath in children and adults. And I want you uh, to detect, to be able to detect child behavior, personality, and the brain differences between a psychopath and a regular um, person. And I learned most of this information from my AP psychology class, but like most of the notes that I took, I threw away. So I had to do a lot, of, a lot of research. And for the um, for the information on them not loving, I got that from factslegend.org. Um, so first of all, a myth is that. Uh, psychopaths can be diagnosed. That is actually false. It is not technically a brain disorder. It is um, a way to identify certain traits in a person. And um, I'm about to tell you about uh, behaviors in children and adolescents that give way to believe that a child is a psychopath. And teens and adolescents um, that are psychopathic tend to have high impulsivity and oh, Um, high impulsivity that lead to crime and delinquency. So children that are not guilty and uh, after misbehaving um, have selfish tendencies and continue to do behaviors over and over again after being punished and are very sneaky and uh, try to get around their uh, parents. Um, these are sure signs that uh, your child uh, can be a psychopath. Older children have links to uh, substance abuse. Uh, they tend to do a variety of uh, drugs and alcohol. And I got this information from verywellfamily.com. Um, one rare sign of psychopath, uh, psychopathy in uh, children and adolescents is signs of uh, killing and torturing animals and having lack of empathy for the death of animals. And I got this information from my AP psychology class. Uh, secondly, uh, personality makes them not normal. They're very unaverage people. Uh, their personality traits uh, and adults are used to determine if you are a psychopath. Lack of empathy, lack of guilt, arrogance, they believe they're better than everyone else essentially. They have a very super, superficial charm. This can be seen in Ted Bundy as he lured in women uh, to murder them with his charm. Um, and they are pathological liars. They actually believe the lies that they tell and believe that it's very normal. They live a parasitic lifestyle and uh, they have they are very impulsive, so they lack behavior uh, control, and they have a promiscuous sexual behavior. So that means that they choose many different partners, um, victims or partners uh, for sexual intercourse. Uh, thirdly, brains. Uh, I have a brain study. I have a brain study um, between a control group, which is a normal brain, and a psychopathic brain, Jim. And this was uh, taken from a neurologist, uh, Fallon. Um, the higher levels of uh, color, such as uh, yellow and green and red, that shows more activity in the brain. And uh, the ones that lack are blue. And that shows right here in the orbital cortex in the back. That's the center for emotion and empathy. And you can see that the control group, the non-psychopathic has more empathy and activity in the brain, in the portion of the brain that shows that. And then one that is psychopathic has an extreme lack of activity. And this is used to test if people have uh, uh, psychopathy. And I got this information from businessinsider.com. Uh, so now you know how to identify a psychopath I've explained behaviors and personality and brain differences between psychopaths uh, and psychopaths. And um, something that I find very interesting and ironic is that uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, he murdered and dismembered and sexually abused 17 victims. And uh, after being in uh, jail for a couple of years, he said this quote, I should have gone to college and gone into real estate and got myself an aquarium. That's what I should have done. I got this from thefamouspeople.com. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's